Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to Marathon Mondays with Mal. I'm Mal Williams with the Marathon Coach Sales Department here in Coburg, Oregon. And we are in Coach 1257, Show Coach, Marathon Coach 1257. And of course, by popular demand, Dave Bash is with us today. There's Dave. Who's popular? Demand? You're popular. Not, oh no. Oh Can't my be. goodness, Can't the emails be. that I get. More Dave Bash, please. So here's the deal, everybody. We are in um, Coach 1257. Uh, this is an X3 two slide, right, Dave? Yes. X3 two slide. It is for sale, and this is an absolutely beautiful coach. Let's take a quick look through the coach. Uh, Dave's back here in the closet. Dave, what if you want to stand up in the rear closet and show him the uh, wiring back there. That's one of my favorite parts of this coach is that we have it behind plexiglass. It's all. Uh, aircraft grade wiring and wire connections so there's no loose connections on these wire connectors and the reason that it's behind plexiglass is for us to illustrate to you to display it to display how much craftsmanship goes into and detail goes into uh, building the coach what what is it close to seven miles of wire Dave five to seven depending on the coach and what options it has gotcha so back here, you've got the audiovisual bank, plus you've got the ASCO's uh, washer dryer. And then we're in the bedroom here. We're going to quickly slide into midsection here. You've got your bath. You've got the, uh, I like to have the pocket doors open. It adds that extra dimension. Uh, a regular swing door always has to be closed. These don't. You can uh, keep them open, and it adds additional dimension. I love the uh, shower doors. It's got a squeegee that cleans it every time. That's kind of a, a nice feature. So let's move here into the galley of Coach 1257. Take a look at, I don't want to close you off, Dave. It's all right. There we go. It happens all the time. Got some bottled water in there. I like that. This is the galley right here. And into the salon, you've got the couch that goes down to a sleeper sofa. You've got the chair here with the embossed leather crocodile pattern, which is also on the cabinets in the galley. Is it crocodile or alligator? Uh, exactly. It's a <laughs> crocagator. Okay. It's a crocagator. And then into the cockpit of 1257. So let's go outside and take a look at the bays real quick. All right. So 1257 has this beautiful uh, color scheme of black and silver and red. And white. And, uh, and white. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> so you got a lot of room in these bays. The bays are all lined in carpet in this one. And then uh, bay number three, or the entertainment bay, has uh, your Samsung in it. We should point out that not all of our coaches come with a girl in the bay. That's right. That's right. A, a, th a third camera person. So that's uh, pretty much 1257 uh, in a very quick overview. Um, the reason that we're going to do this video this morning is that we were talking about, Dave, Dave and I were talking this afternoon, or excuse me, yesterday, about um, the proper operation of the uh, sewer hose and proper operation of the um, shore, cord. shore cord. Thank you. It's having a tough time getting that one out. Okay. Uh, so That's why I'm here for you. I appreciate that. So we wanted to grab Dave and go over the shore cord first and then the hose for the sewer to make sure that everyone understands the proper operation um, and so that it's on video so that people can reference it at any time. So let's go take a look. And as you can see, we're right off of I-5. Marathon Coach Coburg is uh, very easy access off of I-5 for anyone who wants to come and check out our inventory, check out our service department, or take a tour. We've got great tours every day at 1130.
Okay. Take it away, Dave. So the short cord concern has been with some customers that sometimes they have problems with it. I'm going to show you how it's supposed to be worked to prevent any problems from happening. So right now, we've had this coach plugged in here for a while, and you can see the shore cord's a little bit dirty. Um, sometimes if you're in mud or grass or whatever, gravel, before you put the shore cord, or as you're putting the shore cord away, you want to wipe it off, and that's why I've got this rag. So I'm gonna wrap it around the shore cord and hold it as I'm putting the cord away. So as you're retracting it, you're wiping it down. Is that to get all, any debris off of it, Dave? Yes. Okay. If you keep the mechanism that reels this cord in, if you keep it clean, it's gonna work better longer. So if there's dirt or mud, there won't be anything to keep the cord from working properly. So now the, the cord's put away, and the door's up. So we're now we're ready to drive. But when we stop and we want to put the cord out, we're gonna put the door down. So, so, and do you visually look for the door? I mean, you could yes. hear that it came down. Yes. But is it a good, good, good practice to yes. look at the door? It's always good to have a visual. Okay. So, now I'm gonna take the cord out. Now what some of the issues might be, we're gonna keep from happening is I'm going to put the cord out and I'm going to grab it as it comes out and I'm going to keep tension on it as it comes out. If you don't keep tension on it as it comes out, you can have problems. So sometimes if you just let it ball up on the, on the ground outside, it can cause problems with the short cord. So the proper way to do it is to... Keep tension on it as it comes keep out. Keep tension and help it out. Yes. Okay, you can stop. So we've got it out, we can plug it in, turn the shore disconnect on, and that's what we'll do. Okay, now we're plugged in, shore cord's on, we've got power. Now I'm gonna cover the sewer hose. So we're using the same power switches. I'm going to bring the hose out initially. Now normally when you bring the hose out, this cap on the end of it, depending on the ground that you're on, whether it's asphalt, concrete, gravel, grass, mud, whatever, when the hose comes out, the cap takes the brunt of the impact when it comes out. And from this point, I can grab the hose and pull it out more if I need it. This is the best quality hose that we know of. It's a double wall construction. You can form it if you want to, or you can scrunch it up and take up extra hose as it's out. So just to kind of recap here, it's okay to shoot it out as, yes. as it is designed. Yes. But after, after you can grab it, then you want to assist it out. I would because, I mean, like I said, it's the best hose you can buy, but you still want to take care of things. Absolutely. The less wear and tear right. you have to put on it. Double wall construction, but it still can get holes in it. So if you're on gravel, yeah, don't let it drag on the ground. Pick it up and keep it off the gravel as much as possible. It'll just help the longevity of the product. Right. Okay. That's right. Okay. I mean, it's still going to possibly get holes in it, but it is double wall construction. It's a good hose and it's nice and flexible. So likewise, putting it away, hold it in your hand and just push the in button. You know, how you operate it depends on what kind of terrain you're on, whether you're gravel or, or asphalt, you know, depending on what you're on, that's how you wanna be careful and not damage your hose. Okay, so uh, that's about it. So that's proper usage of, um, of the shore cord and, and of hose. the uh, sewer hose. Anything else, Dave, that comes to mind when you are working uh, around, around these two that 
Well, there's all kinds of things that come to mind, but I don't know if you want to take the time on this video. Well, if anyone has any questions, feel free to comment uh, right there on Facebook or YouTube. And uh, if I can't answer them, I'll get Dave involved and he can help uh, proper, uh, how to properly answer the questions. Yeah. Um, you want to take a quick peek at the uh, engine real quick? Okay. Let's, By let's, the way, nice jacket. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that humor in there. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, to open up the rear compartment or the rear engine door, you open the side door over here. There's a handle in here you pull up, which unlatches the door, and then you just push out. The only reason I say that is because a lot of times we get comments like, can you show the engine? So Volvo, 500 horsepower, 1,700, what? 1,750 pounds of torque. Pounds of torque. Okay. It drives pretty well. And Does it's quiet. It, and you've driven these a lot. Yeah. You've driven all over the United States on yeah. deliveries. Uh -huh. um, Transporting coaches. Yeah. So you like you like the uh, Volvo engine. I like the Volvo engine. It gets good mileage. Better about a mile per gallon. Better miles per gallon. Uh, mile better than the older coaches, and uh, it's physically quieter. And it's got more torque. Wow! Excellent. Works well. Good deal. Well, big thanks to Dave Bash once again and always. I'm Mal at uh, Marathon. If you have any questions, hit me up at MalW. That's M-A-L-W at MarathonCoach.com or comment right there on Facebook or YouTube. Um, thanks for watching on every Monday, uh, 9 a.m. every Monday. We got Marathon Mondays coming to you. If you have any thoughts for future shows, let me know. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, great comments that we've been getting and keep them coming. Thanks again, and we'll see you next Monday on Marathon Mondays.